Okay, so we've had a break. This is part two of the podcast. I had to take a break. My phone um, ran out of memory, so I switched cameras. We're all good now. But I had to wait because some kids came out and were playing super loud in this common lawn area. And then there was thunder and lightning everywhere. So I had to wait till the noise died down. But here we go for part two. So moving along. Um, my last work in progress is an old one, but a good one. It's actually a half finished object that I never finished the second one. So it is a mitten. Ta-da! And it's using Patton's Croy sock in um, one of their self-striping colorways. And it's um, a pattern that I kind of made up by doing what I normally do for a sock. And then I watched a YouTube video about how to do a thumb gusset. And then I just finished like I would a sock. And bada bing, bada boom, you got a sock for your hand. So anyway, I wanted to finish this next one because why have one mitten when you could have two, right? Man, I'm silly today. Um, but I'm already this far, and so I think I'm going to pick this up and keep going. Because by the time it gets cold again, I'll have two of these little mittens. Um, I think I might actually, maybe, not sure, maybe write down my little recipe for this. And it wouldn't be a pattern, it's just a simple little recipe for how to get sockish mittens. But anyway, they're very comfortable. Fingering weight, um, three millimeter needle. And I'm enjoying, these are on very inexpensive needles, like the $4 from the craft store kind. Don't know what brand. And uh, yeah, so we'll see if these guys get finished. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think this is a whip that I'm gonna bring back. I would like to have these by the time it gets cold again next season. So I was gonna show you my fully blocked, if I can reach it, my fully blocked moving to the country shawl. I showed this last time unblocked and it's gorgeous. So, haven't woven in my ends yet, but I'm getting there, and I'm loving it. It's a pattern by um, Christy Houghton of Yarn Cafe Creations, and I used Dragon Horde yarn in Rocky Mountain Trail and Frosted Leaves, and I used a four millimeter needle of Chow Goo, of course, my faves and love this pattern, love the yarn. I added a crochet pico edge for fun and I really enjoyed it and I love it. I've already worn it even though I haven't woven in my ends. I couldn't resist, I just had to do it. So yeah, now that it's blocked, it's even bigger. It's super comfy. It goes with a lot of things. I wear a lot of black. Um, and in the winter, I mean in the summer, it goes with a lot more of my white stuff. So, yay for something finished. I'm really happy about it. So, it's a good long shawl. I really like the shape of this one. It's kind of got this Y shape, but it's a triangle. It's lovely. So, that is my only finished object for this episode. And I shouldn't beat myself up about that because I've been dabbling in a lot of things. So I'm excited about it though. And I'd rather have one FO in a month or in three weeks that I love than one I don't. So I love my shawl. Um, I think the next thing I wanted to talk about was sewing. And it's been a while since I've sewn um, yeah, I'm wondering if we should do a random commercial break. Um, while I was having to wait for all the noise to disappear and switching out cameras and things, um, I was looking through some pictures to send my gran. 
um, who I was talking about earlier in the podcast, who took me to see Phantom of the Opera. And I've been meaning to send her a letter with some pictures. And so I pulled out some pictures while I was waiting and I was looking through and I found some funny ones. So maybe this is a giant mistake to share these with people, but I'm gonna because it's fun. Um, I mentioned I used to have a colorway that I dyed earlier this year um, called Telegraph Avenue. And um, it was inspired by my trips to Telegraph Avenue with my dad. And so here is a picture um, uh, of me decked out in, there we go, my tie-dye um, that was purchased on Telegraph Avenue, as was my cool mermaid headband. And that is me. And of course, these were pictures my dad took because... <laughs> He, his preference was for tie-dye. So when it was dad's turn to take pictures, that's how we did things. And then this is me and my dad in some more Grateful Dead inspired gear. I think I was maybe seven. And I love that picture. Lots of fun we had. He used to take me hiking to the park all the time. And of course to Berkeley and Telegraph Avenue. Um, in fact, since today is not going as planned and we're just winging it, I have a picture of us on Telegraph Avenue. And for those of you that have not been, this is what it looks like. Well, one of the booths. So this is me and my dad shopping for some tie-dye and Telegraph Avenue. One of many booths. So it's on the campus of UC Berkeley. And it's just this cool street where there's all kinds of arts and vendors and crazy cool things. Yeah. Anyway. I thought I would share that. And while I'm at it, I'll share one more. This is me and my super cute siblings. Now they're all like grown up now. But this was back when I was in high school. And they were little little munchkins. So anyway, that was a random family picture commercial break. And uh, yeah, I found some good photos to send to my grandma. So I'm excited about that. Anyway, sewing. So I sewed this dress in my beautiful fabric by Gertie, the Shally, uh, I think that's how you say it, Shally fabric in the blue with the rose and the strawberries. I love it, but I made it too big. So I'm going to try in the next two weeks to take it in because it should fit more like this and it fit with tons of positive ease, tons. So I'm going to try and take it in, but I love this dress. I love the pattern. Excuse me. I get the hiccups all the time. Mind over matter. They're gone. Um, and I think I want to knit, uh, sew another one of these, but with a sturdier fabric because the chalet was very flimsy in a good way. It's the kind of thing you want to wear. It's just harder to sew with. And I'm, a close to I'm pretty much a beginner still so I think I want to do this again in a sturdier fabric maybe a knit jersey that's a little tougher um, I'm not sure I think it's a knit like a thicker knit stretch fabric would be good and I'm gonna do it a size down um, I found I don't know if it's I don't think I made mistakes as far as the seam allowance I think I probably, the reason mine was bigger than the measurement said was probably because cutting the stretchy rayon chalet, it stretches out. And so I think it was probably my cutting, not my sewing. That's my hunch. But I think if I do it again, I still want to do it in a smaller size because I don't think I cut it so off that it would be like three sizes too big. I mean, it was huge. So anyway... We'll see, but I'm a fan of this pattern and I'm going to try it again. So I will update you next podcast, but hopefully I'll have a dress that fits and that would be sweet. So that's really all I have in the sewing world. I'm looking down at my notes here. Um, I think that's all the crafty content that I have, but I have a lot of personal ranting to do. Not a ton, but I thought I'd share kind of what I've been up to and what I've been working on. And yeah, so I'm going to do that now. Um, in the past couple weeks, we've had some cool creative experiences. My amazing, wonderful husband took me to see a concert for my birthday. 
my birthday was way back in February, but he, as the great husband he is, knew to um, look, he just keeps tabs of who's coming to town and who I like. And for birthdays and anniversaries, he often gets me these amazing concert tickets and he's just amazing. So last year for our anniversary, he got me Pentatonix tickets. That was a great concert. It also introduced us to us, the duo who opened for them. Amazing. Uh, this year for our anniversary, he got tickets for us to go see Paramore and I'm so excited. I love Haley Williams as a singer. She's just inspiring and so cathartic to listen to. Um, yeah, but for my birthday, he bought me Kimbra tickets and we went to see that concert last Wednesday, this past Wednesday. And she is amazing. Look her up if you like good singers. She does all kinds of different styles. Each one of her albums has a, a little bit of a different, um, not style necessarily, it's kind of the same style, but it's just very, I don't know, she's just very experimental and very different, and I love her. Um, if you're familiar with the Gautier song, Somebody That I Used to Know, she is the female person who does the, the third verse, the duet with him. So she's the one in that song. Um, but her own music is amazing. Fabulous. Um, yeah. I just, I'm so inspired by her. So it was super fun to go see her. Um, one of her songs from her new album is called Recovery. And so that's partially why I titled this episode Recovery. And that song is about getting over somebody. But I think this season of my life has been really about recovering from 10 years of teaching, which was awesome. I loved it. It was good. But teacher burnout is like a real thing. <laughs> People talk about it and it's like, no, that's, that's a real thing. And I know I've, I've shared a little bit on the podcast about when I left the job, um, how it's been different. Um, but really I kind of feel like I've settled down. I have recovered enough to kind of figure out what I want to go for next as far as personal goals. I am not planning to switch jobs anytime soon again, um, but I am planning to, I kind of, I think I just needed some time after going away from a job that I had done for 10 years, that's a very emotional job. I think I just needed some time to gather my thoughts, recover, come down from the craziness and really look at who I want to be, where, why I started teaching, what about those things do I want to keep going and grow in, what about those things, what about that lifestyle didn't work for me, what, you know. So now that I really have kind of settled down from the transition, I feel a lot more ready to move forward. And so it's been really cool. Um, like I said, career-wise, I have a really great job. I love the people I work with. Um, I get to help people all day long, and that's awesome. And it's in a much less emotionally taxing way. Uh, so that's great. So a lot of my goals are really just personal. Um, things that just got neglected um, when I was teaching all the time. So it's been cool. And I'm super excited to move forward with that. So I thought I would share a little bit. I'm not going to share like all of my personal goals because some of them are personal. But I thought I would share with you something that I found helpful on YouTube. Um, I'm going to link to the video below. But it's a type of planning called calendar blocking. Now, what I'm going to do is use this... I know most people would say just do it digitally. I have to have a physical tactile calendar. So that's that. Um, but I'm gonna use this to do it and I will show you um, what it looks like. This is my first week trying it, but um, maybe I will show you on the next one kind of how it looks. But it's an idea instead of planning for the task and writing all the to-dos, it's taking a category of something you wanna make progress in 
and you just allow time for that. You set aside or calendar block time for that thing. And for me, that is a much easier way to think about planning. And so I've kind of boiled down some of my goals into seven categories and I am just going to block time for each one of those sometime in the week and see how that goes. So I'm super excited to try that this week. Um, and that's one way that I feel like I've recovered is I've kind of been able to take a big picture, look at life, take it life inventory, figure out what are some things I really want to do? What are some things that I want to grow in? And now I feel ready to kind of move forward with those things. So that is partially why I haven't been podcasting as much is it's just been a very quiet time of recovery and reflection. So I don't know, um, you know, how many podcasts per month I'll be able to churn out now. I really don't. Um, and I'm not going to commit to a number. Um, but I think that it's exciting. I, I'm excited because I feel like I can spend more time in the knitted community now that I have kind of my ducks in a row and I've got my calendar system a little bit better worked out. Um, yeah, so that's kind of my personal rant of things to share. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else I have to share other than it's really good to be back. It's good to be talking to this camera because I know that behind it are friends um, who love being creative and crafting and so it's just fun to be back podcasting. I hope that you are having an awesome end of May. Oh my gosh, can't believe it's already almost June. But I hope you have a wonderful rest of May, beginning of June. Um, yeah, it's really great to be back. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. It's always fun to chat online. And I hope you have a wonderful, crafty, creative, and satisfying week to come. So. I'm going to sign off and say goodbye, but I hope you have a great week and a great time being creative. So, see you later. Bye.